Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn that how we can query data in Python with generative AI. Uh, so we are using we are going to use some AI models like OpenAI to help us write Python code and also SQL commands so that we can create visualizations and also try to help us get insight from the collected data. So the first step is that we are going to go to our uh, AWS console and make sure that our database is started. Uh, you can check our previous tutorials on how to collect those data. Uh, so basically, we have the income table uh, that contains uh, the income data of different states in different years. Uh, we also have the name table uh, that has FIPS and also state names. Uh, we also have the population data that has a population of different state in different years. Uh, we also created a view. Uh, view is a stored query that stores, that joins the income and also the state names uh, together. Uh, so this is optional. So uh, we created the view so that we can just use a view directly in Python code. Uh, if you don't have the views, you can just um, either create views uh, uh, with pitch admin, or you can just define the queries uh, in Python code. Okay, uh, next, you also need to have an uh, OpenAI key. So you can buy one that from OpenAI, and also uh, you go to the dashboard, and you will be able to create a new key. And once you have that key, uh, you can go to the AWS uh, Secrets Manager, and you can install the new key, uh, because we are going to install that one as a uh, string API keys. So uh, for the key name, we're going to call it API underscore key. And then this is where you need to paste, uh, copy and paste your OpenAI keys. Um, so I just type some random uh, strings. And the next, uh, the secret name, and we're going to call it OpenAI. So, uh, and next, you can save the uh, that secret. And uh, finally, you will have this Python code that is uh, allow you to retrieve the uh, uh, credentials, either uh, API keys or the database credentials in Python. So I'm not, I'm going to cancel it because I already stored my keys. So uh, here you can see I have my OpenAI key, so that has secret name. Um, I also have my PostgreSQL uh, database credentials. Later, I will pass that one to my uh, in my Python code. And now we are going to open our uh, SageMaker and we're going to use our notebook instance. Again, you can check the previous tutorial that how we set up the RDS, uh, how we set up the notebook instance, and also how we collected the census data. Okay, so now we're going to open the, uh, the notebook. And the Python code that we're going to use is uh, available in my GitHub console. So it's called Analyze Census Data with AI. Uh, so you can either um, download this notebook manually like this, or you can do a git colon uh, to copy this entire uh, repository uh, to your notebook instance. So let's go to my our notebook um, uh, instance. Uh, so we already copied the uh, the Python uh, uh, notebooks from our GitHub. So this entire um, folder. So, for example, you want if you want to delete, um, make a colon, you can just call in this repository, and you paste that repository. Okay, and now you can see the entire uh, code has been um, downloaded. So we're using this one, analyze census data. Uh, so first, we need to install some Python libraries. Uh, we need to install the uh, Jupyter AI, so that is a Jupyter AI um, extension for the Jupyter Lab, where we we can use those large language models. So let's uh, pip install this one. And also pay attention that uh, we are using the Jupyter Lab v3. So if you check the about, you can see uh, we are still using the v3. Because of that, uh, we need to install the version one. Uh, which actually is not recommended because right now Jupyter AI uh, they stopped supporting uh, um, V3 Jupyter Lab. So uh, 
if you are using a different version like v4 and you can install the uh, so if you are using version of GP lab v4 or above uh, you can just delete uh, this you can just delete this you can just install the default um, JupyterLab uh, AI and Python library. All right, and next, uh, we are going to install the Lanchain AI, OpenAI. Uh, however, because we use old version, so there were some issues with this one. So we are actually, I'm going to install this instead. So I'm going to install all the dependencies that are required by Jupyter AI. So, which actually included a Lanchain OpenAI. So, here I can install. Okay, uh, so we actually am installing all the dependencies um, which included the Lanchain OpenAI uh, Python package. Uh, it will take uh, a few seconds. So, kernel. So, let's go ahead and restart kernel. And now we can start this cell, so we're going to ignore all the warnings. Uh, so this is a secret function that from the AWS secret manager. So uh, we're going to define this function. And now we're going to pass our credentials to our uh, to Python so that we can create a cursor and we can create a connection object. Okay. And now we're going to pass OpenAI key to this environment variable, which is called OpenAI key. And this is required by the, uh, by the uh, Jupyter AI uh, library. So let's also pass that one. And now we're going to load the, the AI magic comments. And in, in the Jupyter lab, so AI magic comment is a, is a major way that we communicate with large language models and our Python code. So let's run this one. Okay, uh, it took a few seconds uh, to complete. And now we're going to use uh, the AI magic comments, so that is uh, percentage AI. And then our first comment is that we want to list those available uh, large language models. So let's run this one. And we can see they, they support a lot of models, and but uh, for, for like AI21, so we didn't provide the API key, so it's not available. They also support Bedrock from AWS, um, and also they also support other language models, uh, like this one from Google, a Hugging Face. Um, and here you can see OpenAI chat. So this one, we have this. Uh, check so the green check, which means that uh, because we provided the API keys, so we are able to use the OpenAI model. Uh, but we didn't provide the, the other API, so we cannot use the other uh, models. Uh, and also, those are some famous models, so like for the uh, OpenAI Chat GPT four, and we can just call it GPT four. And uh, if uh, you can also uh, give the other model like a short name, like for some hugging face GPT-2, and you can call it uh, GPT-2. And you can see for OpenAI, we have those models available, GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, and 4.0, and also 4.0 Mini. Uh, I believe this is uh, the latest one. Okay. All right, so now we have everything being set up. Uh, so let's. First, let's do something very simple. So uh, let's say we define an SQ, SQL query. So we find out that all the records from this uh, name and score income, uh, so the view, and also we find out where FFTS equals 51. So I'm going to execute this SQL, SQL code, and then I'm going to pass that one to, uh, to pandas. So the pandas will read this SQL code and also find out the top five rows Okay, and you can see we have the Virginia, where's uh, and also income, median household income in Virginia in the past uh, uh, five years. Uh, we can also create a line chart. So here we're going to use uh, dataframe.plot. 
where the x will be the year and also y will be the income. Okay, and then we will see a line chart. Okay, so here we see this line chart. Um, all right, so those those are the very, very basic uh, Python code that analyze uh, data uh, by using pandas and also SQL. All right, so now let's see how we can use the AI to uh, assistant uh, data analysis. So for example, we can ask GPT to explain the code in our uh, in our notebook. Uh, for example, uh, we have a data frame that is defined in a cell eight. So we can ask, okay, so uh, so first the syntax is that we're asking the, the GPT-4, so that's OpenAI uh, chat GPT-4, what is the code in this cell? Because now the cell is a number eight, so the input of the cell is number eight, and we run it. And then we will receive uh, the, the explanations um, by the chat GPT explaining the data in that uh, cell, explaining the code uh, in the cell. Okay, so you can see the code is written in Python using the Python, uh, Pandas Python library, read it from SQL code. Uh, they also explain uh, each line of the code for example, import Pandas, and also uh, receives the uh, uh, SQL query and also the hand function, etc. So, so we can ask, uh, uh, OpenAI or the other uh, generative AI models to explain the code. Uh, we can also uh, ask AI to create code for us. So for example, we say uh, we're asking ChatGPT4, the format will be the code. So we want the OpenAI to write Python code for us. We say calculate the year over year growth rate in this data frame. So that's in the DF data frame. The data frame is right now is still uh, the data frame from the name and score income cell, or name and score income view. Uh, so let's see, can the code, can AI do that? Okay, so calculate the year over year growth rate in this data frame. All right, uh, you can see those are the AI generated code and uh, so they are still import pandas and also matplotlab. And interestingly, uh, so they just load the past data from data frame into a new data uh, dictionary. And then they um, um, pass the data into a new uh, pandas data frame. And then they defined the, the calculations which calculate the, uh, the income change by using a pandas function. And then they create this uh, um, Python code. And I believe uh, the last line will be an error quotation mark. OK, okay. Uh, so now we have this uh, line chart. Uh, we can see that uh, if you compare to previous ones, we see that what there was a job of the, uh, the income in Virginia in about 2009. And now if you look at the growth rate, we can see we have negative growth rate in 2009. Uh, and also those are the output from the, uh, from the GPT. So that's this line. And uh, they said that in this script, uh, they first create a data frame and calculate the percentage change in, in the income. Uh, and also added that one to the, to the pandas data frame. Uh, and also plot income growth rate by using this uh, bar chart. Okay, uh, those are the code that I tested before, so I can delete those. So, okay, uh, and then we can also do a complicated analysis. For example, uh, we are telling GPT that we have a view that named this one in the SQL database. Uh, we also tell the GPT that you don't need to do redefine the connection strings just use a connection defined in this cell. So let's see if that's still the right cell, the connection. Um, we are with, okay, we, we define a connection in the cell three. So in the cell three and load all the re, uh, result to the pandas data frame. Okay, so let's run this. 
and and then we are waiting for the response. Okay, so here are the response. Uh, so uh, they are using the uh, the get secret uh, function to to connect to our database, and then the, we can see they are using the the right view name. They define SQL code that select like everything from this view, and also uh define date from pandas and also they close the connection that's very nice and i'm not going to close the connection because we are still using the uh we still need to connect to the database so i just manually uh commented the last line and let's just run that so now we have this date frame and i'm going to delete this one this was uh, from my existing code okay and now we can keep asking, so what is uh, information in this uh, data frame? So let's rerun this uh, cell. Okay, so uh, they tell me that, okay, in this uh, data frame, we have name, year, FIPS, and also income. Uh, they also tell me that uh, Alabama's average income in this year is this one, FIPS code is this. And there are 780 rows total. Uh, and now we ask, okay, can you calculate the, the average year over year growth rate for each state for data in this data frame and I'll create bar chart to show the result. Okay. Again, I'm going to delete this cell that is uh, the, date, the, the result from my uh, previous code. Okay, and they generate generate this result. Uh, so let's run it. Uh, looks like we have an error. So oh, they are they are loading the data from uh from a CSV file. Okay, that's in interesting. Uh, okay, so I'm going to rewrite this prompt in cell which one um this is a 15 so in cell that is i n uh, 15. okay so i just rewrite this prompt uh so tell uh open ai that to use the data in this Data frame, which is in a cell of this 15. Uh, do not load data from a CSV file. Okay, uh, let's see if uh, OpenAI is able to do the right job this time. All right, and now let's rerun this code. Um, Okay, I think this time uh, they are doing a right job. So year over year income growth rate by state. Uh, we can see DC has uh, the, uh, the highest uh, growth rate. Um, I think this, this time it works. Okay, okay uh, so now let's see, uh, we're gonna try another uh, new analysis. So this is totally new, I, I never tried before. Uh, so we are going to call in the AI and magic command, and we are going to use GPT-4, so GPT-4, and the format is code, so we are telling uh, GPT-4 to, no, uh, uh, to write code, and here we are going to uh, provide a, a, a prompt, let's see, uh, we have a name table, uh, containing state names and FIPS. Uh, we have a population table containing uh, state FIPS year and POP. Okay. Um, Write a 
told to use pandas to load to join both tables and load the data into a data frame. All right, uh, let's see whether or not uh, OpenAI is able to do that. And we have a syntax error. Oh, uh, it is double percentage. Sorry, double percentage AI. Okay. And let's see whether or not uh, they are able to write the, SQL, the right SQL code. Okay. Um, okay. So they still think those are uh, in a CSV file. Okay. Both tables are in a PostgreSQL database. Yeah, let's try it. Okay, uh, now we are getting close. Uh, we can see they connected to the. They are trying to connect with our uh, database where they need. They need to provide the. Uh, credentials and not create cursor and and now they execute a different SQL code uh, so let's say you don't need to uh, let's say we don't need to um, uh, use new connections so use uh, connection object in in the cell that is um, let's see how we def where we defined the connection um, so in the cell uh, cell 3 okay okay so let's use a connection defined in cell 3 and let's retry it all right, and uh, now we have this uh, result. We can see that import pandas and PD, and they define SQL query, and they are using connection directly. So, and again, I don't need to close this connection. So, uh, so let's run it. Okay, and why do we have an error? Okay, uh, name.state does not exist. So, name.state. Ah, oh, uh, that contains state name. We have name name that contains. Oh, our column is called name, so not state. And FIPS public table. Okay. Uh, yeah, my bad. Uh, I didn't pass tell uh, OpenAI the, the right column names uh, because in our name table, the, the name is called name, not the state. All right. Uh, so now uh, this is a new uh, output and looks like they, they just modified the query, so just select everything. Um, Okay, and again, we don't need to close the cursor. Uh, so let's uh, let's run this one, see whether or not it will work. Yeah, I don't think it will work because uh, FFS does not exist. Okay, this one is FFS, not the that. Okay, um, nothing happened, and I think this time it worked. Uh, so I'm going to cut the other uh, cells, and so I'm now I'm going to continue asking. So double percentage AI GPT four. Okay, and I didn't finish my. So what is in the data frame variable. Uh, 
and let's see what is the response. Okay, so in the data frame, we have FHPS name, FHPS again, uh, year, and also the population. Okay, uh, nice. So see AI GPT or dash code. Okay, uh, calculate. the growth for each state uh, visualize the result in a line chart okay uh please ignore my typos so um i think open i should be able to understand it Okay, and uh, now we have this result. Um, without having access to a speed data sets, I can only provide example that you might. Okay, thank you. I'm going to delete that. Uh, please replace. Oh, they're still using the CSV file. Okay. Um, I think I need to use um, girls. Okay, so this time I specify that using calculate growth rate for each state in this date frame and show the result in the line chart. So now I'm trying to do that. Oh wow, they have growth rate for each state. And let's see what's not that is accurate. So they sort values by name and year. Um, and also they show the population growth rate. Okay, uh, that is uh, pretty cool. Okay, um, I think uh, you got the idea that, uh, so basically uh, we, we load the data, uh, we uh, connect to our database, so we use our, the secret um, Yes, here. Uh, so we use a secret uh, uh, manage function to get retrieval the credentials. And then we connect the database. Uh, you don't want OpenAI have access to those informations. So, so that's why that I keep telling OpenAI use a connection that is defined in this cell, in the third cell. And then we load the magic command. Uh, so, so first we check whether or not OpenAI is in that AI list. Um, and it looks like yes, it is available because we provided the, the OpenAI uh, API key. Uh, and then we just can use uh, the magic commands. So when we use magic commands, those are the two percentage. So AI and then specify which uh, large language model you are using. So GPT-4 is uh, OpenAI chat GPT-4. Uh, we can explain the code uh, where uh, you can provide the, the cell number within this um, public bracket. So where input cell eight, so they can read data in that cell and give you the result. Uh, you can also let AI to calculate or visualize your data. So for example, calculate the year-over-year -year growth rate in this data frame. So again, the variable is also in the curly bracket, and then they just uh, do the uh, do the magic and also uh, create those Python code. And uh, we can also let AI, uh, uh, like uh, like OpenAI to load data like uh, from div, uh, uh, start from beginning. Just you need to tell the, the OpenAI that exactly the the table name, the column name, and also uh, tell that it is in the database, not in the CSV file. Uh, and also again, we want to use uh, existing connections because we don't want to pass our credentials to OpenAI. Um, and now they are able to load the 
uh, the right table names. Uh, if not, uh, you may need help manually. Uh, and then they load data into the to the Python data frame, Pandas data frame. Uh, you can also uh, let OpenAI to do some calculation, for example, calculate the population growth rate for each state in this data frame. Again, uh, if you need pass variables to OpenAI, you need to bring that one into this curly bracket. And OpenAI is, is, great, is able to give you these very nice uh, visualizations. And as you can see that I tried different prompts, so so they, they don't give you the, the, the right result in the, normally in the first response. So you need to learn from their uh, output and also give them more accurate instructions. And then they will give you the, uh, hopefully they will give the right uh, visualizations. Um, and also keep in mind that uh, when we use uh, the OpenAI or the other large language models in this way, we are actually passing the data to OpenAI. So OpenAI will be able to access our data. So uh, if you have uh, sensitive information, uh, you may not want to do that, or you, or you may want to use a large language, large language model that hosted within your uh, control, so like locally and not in the cloud, uh, so that you can guarantee that the data is still, it does not go outside. Okay, and finally, uh, I'm going to close the connections.